goodness and your mercy toward us. For your goodness and your mercy toward us. Good morning, precious people of God. Blessed Faithful Friday to all of our St. John Northwest Construction Zone family and to our wonderful friends who have joined us. Today is October 8th, 2021. Welcome to day 20 of our 21 days of breaking ground through fasting prayer, meditation, discipline, and study. You're probably able to say that right along with me by now, right? We are only one day away from completing this initial journey of breaking ground. Amen. Blessings to all of you who have joined us online through Facebook or YouTube or on our church website. Amen. I am Pastor Connie C.J. Jackson bringing to you our morning meditation. I want to use our foundational scripture that has undergirded this 21 days of breaking ground, and I want to use it for our meditation this morning. It says, break new ground, plant righteousness, and reap in accordance to the grace and mercy that your loyalty will produce for me. Break up the fallow ground of your heart. It's time to seek the Lord. When He comes, He will rain or shower righteousness upon you. And that's from the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12. Our meditational topic this morning is it's time to break up the fallow ground. It's time to break up the fallow ground. Now, you may have been wondering all of this time, what is fallow ground? Fallow ground or fallow soil is simply ground or soil which has been left unplanted for a period of time. In other words, fallow ground is land left to rest and regenerate. Let's just hang on to that for a moment. Fallow ground is left to rest and regenerate. Many of you may have thought there was a negative connotation to it, but actually it's positive if it's used correctly. And we're going to find that out in just a moment. Fallow ground is simply ground of soil, which has been left unplanted for a period of time. It's land left to rest and regenerate. Amen. Allowing the soil to have a specific rest period gives it time to replenish nutrients which can be leached from certain plants or regular irrigation. So while land uh, in biblical times and also, gosh, in the time when I was growing up in the country, amen, land was allowed to lie fallow that it might become even more fruitful. And this condition also led to land soon becoming overgrown with thorns and weeds. While it was resting, it was also gathering thorns and weeds. So I want you to hear that. So the biblical expression, break up your fallow ground, means don't sow your seed among thorns. Break up all your evil habits. Clear your heart of weeds in order that they may be prepared for the seed of righteousness. Amen? And then in the natural context, the farmer or the cultivator of the soil was careful to break up his fallow ground 
to clear the weeds before sowing seed in it. So, so says Hosea the prophet, break off your evil ways, repent of your sins, cease to do evil, and then the good seed of the word will have room to grow and bear fruit. Are you grabbing a hold of that? In other words, if um, we can't try to sow good seed of the word, right? without first bothering to prepare the soil and pull out the thorns or else the seed will have little effect. Let me go back over that again. We can't try to sow good seed. We can't try to sow the word in our lives if we've not bothered to prepare the soil and pull out the thorns or else the seed will have little effect. Here's another piece unplowed ground won't let a crop grow. Unplowed ground won't let a crop grow. Stumps must be removed. All the tree stumps must be removed. Hear that? And I'm going to tell you, it's hard. It's hard work. It's hard preventing seeds from penetrating and germinating and growing to maturity. We have to remove the stumps. And many of you know that I grew up on a farm. So this is the process for removing tree stumps. First, you must dig way down and cut each of the main roots with an ax or a chainsaw. And then you attach a rope or a chain to the stump and pull it out either with a team of horses or a truck. Amen? So here's a meditation question this morning, or some meditation questions. What's been growing in your heart previously that has been difficult to remove? Has it been the stump of hatred or bitterness, lust, greed, unforgiveness? What's been growing in your heart that has been difficult to remove? These things must be rooted out so that new crops of love and joy and peace and self-control can be planted. Are you getting all of these wonderful analogies? And then next, hardness must be broken up. Let's ask a few meditation questions. Where is the hardness in your heart? Where is the unbelief that is lurking in your soul? Hear this. If you've been hurt in a relationship by a significant other or a relative, you may have sealed off an area of your life because it's just too painful. But you need to let God break up those old resentments and heal those old hurts. God will pull the plow, so to speak, but you must direct it toward those hard places in you that you know must be dealt with. Sometimes we've been heartened by disbelief or unbelief. We've prayed that a loved one would be healed and not die, and our prayer wasn't answered. Or maybe you've been out of work or you have a chronic illness that has taken its toll on your faith. And you've come to the conclusion that God doesn't answer prayer, at least not for you. That hardness of unbelief must be faced squarely and broken up if God is to plant something new and fruitful in your heart. Here's one of the solutions to this. Heartfelt repentance and confession is one way of plowing deep, removing the hardness. So here's a question. When is the last time you were literally on your knees, broken before the Lord? I know it's been a while for me. Next, Thorns must be gathered and burned. When a field goes unplanted for several years, it often becomes covered with thorns or weeds. Same thing with us. 
right? When we've been unproductive for a while, we just have a tendency to just gather bitterness, gather laziness, just kind of grows on us and we're unproductive. So here's a meditation question. What kinds of thorns make the fields of our hearts unproductive? See all this agricultural language I'm using, right? So in the parable of the sower, Jesus does the same thing. And, and this is found in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus uses thorns in a field to describe the human heart. Here is how the uh, Matthean writer says it. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the person who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. And then the Lucan writer says it this way, the seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. So, once again, our meditation question. What kinds of thorns make the fields of our hearts unproductive? Depending upon your particular heart, those thorns may represent sexual temptation and lust, self-indulgence, pride, anger, selfishness, an unhealthy love of entertainment and recreation, addictions, greed, and any number of other thorns. Each of these thorns, family, chokes the Word, I mean the Word of God. And each has a devastating effect on the crop, I'm doing air quotes here, on the crop that God wants to grow in you and me. So we must root them out instead of just letting them fester and grow. Amen? But listen to this. There's another side to this. Fallow ground is also unused ground. Fallow ground is also unused ground. Listen, you may have many aspects of your life that you've surrendered to God and it's under God's cultivation for a crop of righteousness and the fruit of the Spirit. But maybe there's a part of your life that you never got around to cultivating, planting, and harvesting. Here's our meditation question. Is there a part of your life, think about it, that you've never got around to cultivating, planting, harvesting? Maybe you've just put it off, you know, plowing this particular piece of land because it's too difficult or too painful or you just can't see how you're going to do it. That kind of ties back into our Bible study uh, on Wednesday. Right? Perhaps you can't envision the fruit and the grain that can grow. So you've just never bothered. Right? But our God, I want to encourage somebody this morning. Our God is the great vine dresser. He's the great gardener. He's the great vineyard owner. And if you'll break up the additional foul ground in your life, God will extend and enlarge your fruitfulness. Family, join me in looking forward to our new season, to our new year of breaking ground. It's going to be a great time to rededicate, once again, I'm doing air quotes, the tracts of land that comprise our lives and put them under cultivation for God. Now is the time to break up these unplowed fields of ours and yield them to the Holy Spirit's growth. God is calling us to this. Will we be obedient? Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, we give our lives, our human land, our hearts over to you for cultivation once we have done the work of breaking up our fallow ground. Holy Spirit, we yield ourselves to you and give you license and permission to pull up and out any old sin stumps in our lives that have prevented us from being fruitful and productive. 
we begin now showing righteousness and reaping fruit of unfailing love. We will seek you, Lord God, with our whole heart. Come and shower righteousness upon us, even us. Let some drops now fall on even me. Even me, Lord, even me. Let some drops now fall on me. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. It's time to break up the fallow ground. I hope you'll return to this particular meditation and listen to it and take notes. Amen. Also, please share this meditation with your network of friends and family. I say blessed, faithful Friday to all of you. Also, do two things for me, would you? Would you please uh, uh, plan to be with me uh, tomorrow morning, which is Saturday, I know, but for morning meditation on our last day of this journey. It would mean so much to me. Amen. And then two, if you're planning to join us uh, Sunday for our fourth church anniversary celebration, I tell you, I just think it's going to be a great day of fellowship. Please text us at 281 9165335. I think we sent out a text on yesterday or the day before yesterday. And so if you'll just respond to that same text and let us know if you're coming and if you're bringing people with you, tell us how many. Amen. We want to be prepared for you. Please know that I love you dearly. And until tomorrow morning, this is Pastor CJ signing off for now. Be blessed, be well, and take care.